yeah. I think to myself, okay, God, why am I putting this layer over my heart right now? Like, what am I trying to protect myself from? What, what, what's going on? What, what am I w not willing to face right now that I want to revert, that I'm trying to revert to this behavior that I don't want to do? I mean, the hard work is trying to overcome this hurt or pain mm -hmm. that we had. And then once we can commit that to the Lord, then to me, the, the symptom of that goes away. Welcome everyone to Bumper Sticker Faith. What's and up? If you thought this was a Joe Rogan podcast, then I'm sorry. But no cast, no shade on Joe Rogan. I like Joe Rogan. He's a cool cat. To yeah, me. He, so he, he's a brave, he's a brave man. <laughs> so we're here today and we're in the third part of the series that we've been in on pornography. Mm. And the just some behind the scenes a little bit, just so you know how we recorded these. We happened to record a group of episodes before we actually got the chance to release them. So as you hear these, you may have been giving us feedback and and maybe we haven't responded or addressed some of those issues, but we're on it and uh, and we're listening and we want to, uh, uh, we just want to let you know how um, the recording, I guess, has been going, if that makes sense. Yep, yep. So some announcements. We have a new website, as we've mentioned. You can go to bumperstickerfaith.com and check that out. And part of that website is a little tab on the menu called the BS Crew. Mm, the crew, baby, the crew. Y'all want to be a part of the crew, straight and, up. And there's different levels of membership for the BS Crew. You can sign up to support us on the single life sentence level or the double life sentence level level or the triple life sentence level i'm more partial to the triple i don't know about you um but yeah if if you can like the triple um is longer and it's yeah. it's it's a lot involved in that and uh, i think that would probably be the best sentence to have is a triple life yeah when uh when that came to me uh about what we would name the, the levels of support i thought of lewis and uh just i couldn't stop laughing yeah, so yeah, sorry it's, for the irreverence. It's, it's, it's funny, funny, not funny. That's what I say. Fun, funny, not funny. Funny now. <laughs> so uh, check out the BS crew. If you like what we're doing and want to support us, that would be a great encouragement and a help to keep this uh, podcast going. And then also listen on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and rate us and leave a review. I don't think we've gotten any reviews as of today. Yeah, people playing nice, man. I don't yeah. know what's up. Yeah, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. I would say if you ain't got nothing nice to say, say it anyway. Yeah, say it anyway. You know, we ain't tripping. We grown men here. We can take it. Plus, it might be some good constructive criticism or something. You know, let us know what's up because we doing this for, for people. We ain't doing it for ourselves, you know. And if it's not yeah. really benefiting anybody or nobody sees value in it, then I can do something else with my time. I can go work out or I, I can go back to sleep. I'm a little sleepy <laughs> still, you know. Yeah, it is early here today. So speaking of doing something for for uh, for people, for you guys, we are going to get into our topic this week, and uh, it is uh, the third part of pornography, and mm. we were going through this acronym based on the word clown, and you can go back and look at those videos or listen and see where we got that uh, inspiration from, from a Key and Peel video, which had nothing to do with pornography. But we're just using uh, kind of the the basis for their video there, and we went through confession. That's the C, and confession involves uh, admitting the totality of the situation that you're in and embracing it. And when it comes to fighting a porn addiction, and confession L is listen, and that involves listening to. Uh, yourself and what's going on inside of you, the, the um, examining yourself we, we got from um, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. And today is open. That's the O. And as a way to get in there, uh, into the open, bridging from the listening, I, I was at the doctor last week and they had to do a heart echo on me. Mm -hmm. 
And because he listened to my heart, and he's like, something's not not quite right. Maybe there's a murmur or something there. Mm. And he said, like, let's do an echo of it. And he had me laying down, you know, mm. and and putting this uh, this I don't know what it was, this thing on my chest. And he's like listening, and and it had it hooked up to this computer, mm. so like I could listen too. Mm. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there laying down, hearing the inside of my body. <laughs> you know, wow. it was like weird oh, because you could hear your own heart beating in mm. it. I'm pretty sure at one point it sounded like crickets, and that's <clears throat> never a good sign. Oh, wow, that's not good. You know, they didn't put them things on you and say, clear! <laughs> yeah, no, no. they didn't have Boom. to yet. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right, that's good. Yeah, this is the first step. Okay, all So right. I'm listening to what noises that my body's making that I, my whole life, have been unaware of, you mm-hmm. know? So there's like things in, in, in science we call that the, I think, the autonomic nervous system mm. where like you have processes in your body going on that you're not controlling. Mm. Like they're controlling themselves and they're mm-hmm. doing all this and we're not even aware of it. Mm-hmm. And as I, was, as I was laying there, uh, I was actually thinking about this podcast. Okay. And I was thinking, how much more do we have things going on in our souls that we're not even aware of what's going on but they're they're like happening like your soul's doing something craving things desiring things wanting things uh and feeling pain over things that maybe you're not even aware of Mm. but yet that's going on just like we're not aware of everything that's going on inside of our bodies we're not aware of everything going inside our souls and 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 where we're going with this today is this idea of opening ourselves up to the pain that we may feel inside but aren't aware of it. And this goes back to the, the listening and examining yourself and, and getting a bigger picture. So we're kind of, you can kind of see the direction we're going to try to help people with a porn addiction is being more conscious of what's going on inside of themselves. So. O stands for open. It's opening yourself up to pain. Now, there's an there's an interesting connection here with uh, the Bible story way back to the beginning of in the book of Genesis that I want to bring our attention <clears throat> to. Okay, so in the book of Genesis, in Genesis three, Adam and Eve fell. Right, mm-hmm. fell into sin, and they were naked and they covered themselves up with some. Was it fig leaves? Yeah, fig leaves. But then God comes along and He creates skins to cover themselves up with. Or He, well, he, he didn't get, create well, them. He right? gets, well, He did, but yeah, yeah He created <laughs> the animals. Technically, yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> but I, yeah, you're right too. But uh, He got some animals, killed the animals, and and covered over their their private areas Mm -hmm. with these garments of skin, all right? Because as they were going to move out from paradise into the rest of the world, there's going to be danger there, and they they, they would need protection. So, like, as I think about clothing, I think maybe there's more, but I can think of, like, three things that clothing does for us. It protects us. So they're, they're like, going out out of paradise in where there's thorns and all these things that could hurt them. Mm -hmm. So clothing protects us. Second thing, clothing can hide our shame because Mm -hmm. they were naked and they felt this shame. So clothing can hide our shame. And then the third thing is that it can, like, be a way to identify us. So based on the kind of clothing you have, mm, okay. it's some kind of an identity mm. that you could could uh, um, let other people know if mm-hmm. you're a good guy, bad guy, or whatever, you sure, know, what yeah. kind of a person you are. So those three things. So in the Bible, though, uh, I, heard, I heard this pointed out before, that when the first couple went away from the Garden of Eden, so when they're in the Garden of Eden, that, that's like the very center of reality where God is, okay? And then the further you go away from God, the more dangerous it becomes, and therefore the more layers you need to put on. Hmm. Right? Okay, okay. So the, you need to put on the garments of skin, and then then you need to put on a family. You know, you need to come together to protect yourselves. You know, join together, and then you need to put on a community, and then you need eventually it goes on where you form a city, okay. and then you put walls around the city <coughs> because hmm. technically that's what a city is. It's a walled place where to protect the people that are mm-hmm. in it. Okay. And so the further you go out away from Eden, from where God is, the more layers of protection you have to put on to hmm. to, to layer up, to guard yourself, because you're not with God anymore. Yeah, okay. Basically is, is, is the idea. So the farther from God we go, then the more we 
have to protect ourselves from pain, the more we have to identify ourselves because he's not the source of our identity anymore. And uh, the more we have to um, um, do these things to cover over vulnerability and shame and all of that. So so how does that relate to porn? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah. okay. It's a lot to. And so it's a lot to take in. Um, it's interesting what you're saying in terms of being away from God and more protection we need. That definitely makes sense. But how does it re- relate to porn or porn addiction? So as God's people went off and they're forming all these communities and that, and there's one particular group of people that God put a special eye on, his, his people Israel. Mm-hmm. And he called one of them, Abraham, and he said, you're going to be my special person. You're not, I'm going to protect you, all right? I'm going to identify myself with you. I'm going to take away your shame. I'm going to do all these things. And the very first sign of that promise, of that covenant that he gave him was circumcision. Okay. Right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Now think about what circumcision is, and we're getting to the porn. Mm. Think about what circumcision is. It is the re- a removing of the layer of skin that's protecting you, your mm-hmm. private area, really. Yep. But think now about the original uh, garment of skin that God put on Adam and Eve, right? Mm-hmm. So now, in a sense, he's removing that layer of skin as a way to say, hey, you're still my special mm. people from the Garden of Eden. Like, you're still my special people. I still want to be in a direct personal relationship with you. Even though you're off and you have to have all these layers on and that, even though I, I want you to be my special people set apart, I want you to remember Eden, how it used to be when mm-hmm. we used to walk with each other okay. and have that relationship. And so circumcision is this just beautiful sign that like if you were a Jewish uh, person at that time, like I'm just sitting here trying to think like uh, you're like walking around at all times if you've been circumcised. And you have like this secret nakedness underneath you, you mm-hmm. know, this special Edenic Eden promise that you're walking around with and you realize that I'm God's, I'm God's child. Mm-hmm. God is my God. He's still my God. It's still as if I'm with him in the garden and one day we'll be back together, but I'm going to carry around with myself this promise. And this applies to males and females because later in the Bible story, when God's people were kind of abusing that commandment of circumcision, just kind of taking it for uh, taking it for granted, and saying, you know, just because we're circumcised, that means we're God's people. We don't have to live up to any other any other way. God's like, no, 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 you don't get it. It's not really about circumcising that part of you. It's about and then in Jeremiah chapter four verse four. God says, I want you to circumcise your heart. Mm -hmm. That's what it's really about. And in Jeremiah 4, 4, God says, circumcise or remove the layer of skin. Again, think back to Genesis 3. Remove that layer of skin from your heart unto me. Mm, Okay. 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 So here's where it comes to uh, uh, porn and and our addictions. The farther away we get from God in this sense, the more we want to uh, put layers over our hearts. And I think porn is one of those layers, okay? So we have some kind of a pain that we've gone gone through, some kind of a wound, some kind of way that life has hit us. Mm-hmm. And one of our reactions is, as a way to deal with that pain is to say, well, I'm going to go, you could choose a lot of things. I'm going to eat like two tubs of macaroni or I'm going to go do whatever or I'm going to drink or I'm going to put on this layer of porn. I'm going to seek porn. And that's a way to cover over the pain that we feel, to protect ourselves and so forth. And what the O here, open yourself to pain, what I'm, what I want to get at, what I want to give people permission to do is, is to n- not put on the porn layer to cover their pain. No, to open yourself up to pain and say, and to be able to recognize. Because you've been listening to yourself, you know, you've been examining yourself, and, and hopefully by now you've gotten an idea of, of why you're going to, to porn. Like, what's the pain there that you're trying to cover over that you're not willing to face? 
Yeah, I see. I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm just thinking, like, if I'm listening to this, and this is the issue I have, a couple things I'm thinking. One is, like, how do I identify this hurt or pain or whatever that I had that I'm using porn to, like, cover the pain, mm-hmm. thus putting a layer over my heart, <clears throat> thus keeping me farther away from God? Like, how do I identify that? Yeah. You know, for some, it could be if... If something like sexually happened to you in the past, that might be like a no brainer. Yeah, yeah. But it could be something else that you're even unaware of. That like, how do you how do you find that out? Yeah, a good way of doing it actually is to face the pain. Okay, to open yourself up to the pain. And here's here's kind of what I mean by this. I mentioned this this book mm-hmm. last time by Anna Lemke, and this is not a Christian book. She's not a Christian person, so far as I know, uh, called Dopamine Nation. Mm-hmm. And what she does is um, she, through scientific study and, and that, she um, has, she labeled something that called, I think it's the pain pleasure balance. And like you picture this seesaw that goes mm-hmm. back and forth. On the one side is pain and the other side is, is pleasure. And uh, we normally think that when it comes to addiction that, uh, we feel this pain, you know, on, on this side. And so, well, we go and do this addiction to try to soothe the pain and, you know, balance it out. But what she's found, and, and, and scientists have said, yeah, we do this addicting behavior and it like produces more dopamine and it helps soothe our pain, right? But what she's found out is so interesting. Scientifically, she's proven that when we have this pain, when actually you engage in the addiction, It actually creates more pain in your life. Like that's what the Bible said all along, that sin is destructive. Mm -hmm. But she said scientifically that from a material point of view, that when uh, you're feeling pain and you engage in drugs or porn or whatever, it actually leads to more pain. And and so then you end up having to do more Hmm. of the porn, more of the addictive behavior to try to to overcome that. But yet you cause yourself more and more and more pain. Yeah, I mean, that makes all the sense in the world. But but so but it doesn't for me correlate to that porn addiction stems from pain. I still don't I still don't make that. So here's here's what because from my like background and indulging in that. Like it's a pleasure thing. It's it's got nothing to do with oh I'm in pain. It's got to do with I'm aroused, and this is a way to satisfy this this hunger, this desire that I have. That really mm-hmm. is a God given hunger and desire. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like it's a sin for yeah. sex if it's used in this proper way. So I don't. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I still don't see that all sexual addiction and sin stems from pain that a person mm-hmm. has had. Because that I would say, to my knowledge. And I've thought about this long and hard, especially mm-hmm. when I was in prison for years. Like m- the link for me to pornography, masturbation, and all that type of stuff had nothing to do with pain. It had everything to do with pleasure. So you might be right, and I just don't get it yet. Mm-hmm. But I do want to voice this because there may be some people listening that's like me. Like in the context you're talking about, if it was something painful, then it makes all the mm-hmm. sense in the world that you're you're soothing your pain through porn. Mm-hmm. And it's actually going to create more pain, which is like a dog chasing yeah, his tail. Yeah. But for me, it never it never had anything to do with yeah. pain. Well, two things on that. One is um, I want to I'm having having in mind those who are are addicted to porn, mm-hmm. not like those who who use it or see it or every so often and don't really have that addiction. But your if your life is hmm. really trapped by it and you can't escape it or get out of it, then chances are there is a pain down there hmm. that okay. is the source of it. And so what um, what she says to do, like the first thing that you need to do, and this gets into it more, the second thing, uh, is to fast from all addictions, okay? So mm-hmm. fat, if it's porn, then you just need to fast from it for 30 days, okay. she says. And what happens during that time when you make yourself abstain or to fast from it is you'll be... Uh, more in touch with yourself and what's going on because you'll be going throughout your day and something will trigger or something will happen and you'll want to do it, but you'll force yourself not to do it. Mm -hmm. And you'll be more sensitive to actually why you wanted to do it that time. Mm -hmm. Like what, what tripped it off? Mm -hmm. What triggered it? What's going on? What's, what's the rhythm of your day going? What, what, who said what to you? What, what's happened or what kind of activity physical or that have you had or not had? Mm -hmm. So you're more sensitive to what's going on and you'll be able to detect where that pain is coming from. 
in your life. And it may not be a trauma in your past, but it, it could be some kind of thing that uh, is uncomfortable to you that you're not willing to uh, own up to or to face. And it's easier just to to uh, seek the comfort of of this addiction. Sure. I mean, porn could just be like any drug. You know, it stimulates you from the reality that you live in that you don't like. Yeah. So some people use weed. Some people use cocaine. Some people use sex. Some people overindulge in food. And pain could just be meaninglessness. Like mm. I, I'm not. And that's good that you call, called it, mm. called me on that or called us on that. Like it doesn't have to be a very uh, heavy, uh, big trauma in your past, but it could be just you know, your blasé, meaningless life that you just don't want to face. And so it, it's easier to just go to this. Addiction. Sure, sure. But that would still be a negative. I guess my point was like there was for me, I never identified any negative things in my life that drove me to want to look at porn. You know what I mean? So yeah. it wasn't like, oh, I had a crappy day or I'm trying to holler at this this good looking chick and she turned me down and wouldn't give me her number. So let me go look at some. You know, it was yeah. it was never nothing like that for me. It was yeah. just all like, oh, man, like, yeah, I don't want to go yeah. <laughs> and get too graphic or anything, go off the rails. But yeah, and maybe like I've never heard this concept before. So maybe even for me to listen to that and let it marinate a little bit. And maybe mm -hmm. you guys can, too, if you kind of see my point, maybe let that marinate inside your thinking and chew on it a little bit because mm -hmm. may maybe there is you know mm -hmm. what i mean as i start peeling back the layers and thinking you know maybe maybe it is some sort of pain not talking about the level or degree of pain mm -hmm. but pain versus no pain yeah some kind of discomfort some kind of so like when i'm uh going throughout my day and mm -hmm. i'm i'm tempted to engage in some kind of a habit or that i don't want to engage in mm -hmm. and maybe it's good maybe it's neutral maybe it's bad but i don't want to engage in it i say to myself thinking about that jeremiah 4 4 the circumcise mm. your heart yeah i think to myself okay god why am i putting this layer over my heart right now like what am i trying to protect myself from what what what's going on what what am i what not willing to face right now that i want to revert that i'm trying to revert to this behavior that i don't want to do yeah you know that's the key <clears throat> for me like these are things that you don't want to do but you do anyways Yep, you yep. know, and and how can you um, how can you deal with that? And one, the way I'm suggesting is open yourself up to the pain, and settle down in in that, and don't go too quickly to the soothing, layering up behavior. Mm -hmm. Instead, do some other things like uh, like take a cold shower, <laughs> like exercise. Yeah, go be around some other people if you go can. Go be around yeah, other people. Have some fail safes in place. Yeah. You know, like some emergency like things set in place where if you get in this type of feeling that you can have some things to put in place. Mm -hmm. And in particular, keep in mind the hard things that you can do, not just the, mm -hmm. the good things, but like I'm, I'm specifically saying like do something difficult, like really lean into that, opening yourself up to pain side of the teeter totter. Mm -hmm. So do something hard that you normally wouldn't want to do. And that will um, be a help to you potentially um and help help you to uh, face the pain and not to go go to the layering up i guess so oh open yourself up to pain uh that's all i have for, for this yeah and i mean what we, are you thinking we oh, i'm thinking like for us to think that we can get through any one topic in one episode is like pie in the sky yeah <laughs> you know because we we roll it right now, you know. We wanna, we want people to be able to listen to what we talk about and not get to a point to where it's so long that it's like womp 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 womp. You know what I mean? I want so, people to marinate in this, uh, in this idea of pain. Maybe there's something to it. May, maybe there's not, but it's it's worth slowing down uh, to think about. So I would say, I would say, you know, before we move on to the next letter, I think um, that the next letter needs to be a next episode yeah, will, because we, we already. Or yeah. getting challenged on time because we do want to be respectful of that for people. But I think we do have some time to where we can still kick this around a little bit because when you talk about um, opening yourself up to pain, are you meaning as we do self-examination and start to identify the source mm -hmm. of what's causing us to have this addiction, mm -hmm. 
that's where the pain is going to stem from. Yeah. And as you say that, I, I'm just reminded of the the reasons we put on clothing that I originally said. And maybe those are three mm-hmm. areas of pain in the sense of of shame. You know, that's one reason we put on clothes to because we're, we're mm-hmm. we, we don't we don't like some part about ourselves. And that's a source of pain. You know, shame is mm-hmm. a source of pain or protection is another one. Maybe we feel in danger. Yeah. Uh, in some area and we and we go to addiction or porn to cover that up or then identity as well like uh on my way here <laughs> driving a, a there's a, a real nice sports car that was right in front of me and he and he knew it and he was showing off you know he blew right by my chevy you know at after we were at a standstill at this light and I, I, my first reaction was, wow, you know, it's a great car. If, I, if only I had that car. But y- even as I said that, I was like, th- that's another layer that I'm putting on myself. Like, like if people could see me in that car, identify me as a kind of guy mm-hmm. who would drive that thing yeah, yeah. or wear those kinds of clothes, you know, then they'd see me better than, you know, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Strip that away. <clears throat> it's okay to be me. It's okay to be you. You know, just how yeah. you are. Face that. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I just want to go back to the the pain or you know, the source of the pain because, you know, for a person to do that, that's a big deal. It's not an easy thing to do. But like, I'm just, I'm thinking of someone that's listening to us that's taking this seriously, and they start doing this. They start trying to identify the source of the pain that's mm-hmm. causing. Um, the porn addiction to exist mm-hmm. like what do they do with that like are are we equipped as individuals when we identify the source to be able to deal with that on our own or like what what do we do yeah you you take it to somebody else but like take your it, wife your grandpa it, yeah. your grand i mean yeah take it to somebody else that you trust in life uh whether it's a friend a pastor you got to take it to somebody i guess i'm first. thinking like Probably somebody's gonna need some counselor or some therapy. Yeah, that's but every anybody's not a counselor or a therapist. Yeah. So like my wife, for me, if I identified a hurt or a pain from say my childhood that's caused this addiction, she's not gonna be able to walk yeah, me yeah. through getting over this yeah. pain. Right. Yeah, no. So to me, seeking someone that has been trained and that is equipped in that area would be the most likely thing that needs to be done. Yeah. Not just telling some buddy or some girlfriend or maybe even a family yeah. member because number one, they may not know what to do and then you may get frustrated and that can cause more yeah. harm than good. That's true. Or they can give you some bad advice. That's true. Which can do may- way more harm than good. So like I wouldn't have you do my heart echo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? You got a heart murmur, don't come see me. Cause I'm gonna try to put I, them I, things I, on yeah. you and say clear. Yeah. And you ain't even to that point yeah. that I might kill. You're right though. You you seek a professional <clears throat> who really knows who knows that area. Yeah, so we need to seek somebody yeah, for sure. that and, and you know, the word pastor. Like, I believe in that word. I have a, a definition of that. But everybody that carries that title doesn't necessarily mean they're the right person. Yeah. You know, so you need to seek out what I would say is some good biblical counseling. Um, I don't have anything against secular stuff, too. But if you are a Christ follower, I believe that the word of God has the answers mm-hmm. that we need <clears throat> to overcome any hurt or pain we have. But we may not be equipped or trained enough ourselves. And maybe maybe we are. Mm-hmm. Like there's got to be pastors out there that's been yeah. trained that have this very yeah. problem. So evidently yeah. they either can't deal with it themselves or maybe it's just beyond like their training and you need somebody else. And so it's hard work. I think the first thing is we need to pray. Yeah. You know, we need to fall Psalm before God. Psalm 139, God search my heart. <clears throat> yeah. We need to fall before yeah. the Lord and say, hey, here's what's going on with me. Yeah. This is what I've identified. I need help and I want help, you know, and then I would say maybe talk to a pastor or somebody mm-hmm. that you respect, um, a theologian, a Bible scholar, somebody that, you mm-hmm. know, that has a good handle of the word of God and don't seek necessarily counsel from them. Um, they may be the right one or maybe it's saying, hey, who do you know? Who's a good counselor that you've dealt with before if they yeah. wouldn't be one? And then just that's when the hard work comes in yeah. to me. Like that's the beginning of the hard work. Finding out what the problem is is work, and it may be a little hard, but that's not the hard mm-hmm. work, in my opinion. The hard work is trying to overcome this hurt or pain mm-hmm. that we had, and then once we can commit that to the Lord, then to me, the the symptom of that goes away. Mm-hmm. There's no need and no desire to want to look at porn anymore mm-hmm. because the issue that was causing it is gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the and the the hard work could maybe initially just be admitting and that you do have a problem and you don't know what it is. <clears throat> just like when I I censor something wrong with my physical heart, I mean I don't know what it is, and I have to go to the professional, mm-hmm. and he or she helps to diagnose that. You, you know, yep. same thing. And I'm so glad you brought this up because people don't want to go to counseling or therapy because there's a shame involved, yep. right? You, we go right back there and yep. and it's okay, you know, face even the shame, face face that pain and be willing to go see a counselor or a therapist. And the other thought I had was God always uses means, meaning he, he, he uses... Uh, he uses things in this world to help us, and he could use a therapist. He could even use a secular therapist if, if mm-hmm. it comes to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God could use that. You know, um, I wouldn't start there, but God could use that to help to yeah. help us. Yeah. Well, man, you know, this is again a sensitive topic, and as we wind down, I just think that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we would like to do, um, we haven't. I don't know if we discussed it at all or discussed it much. Is man, if you had some prayer requests, you know, we would love to pray for you. So if you do have any prayer requests, um, man, send them our way and we'll pray yeah. for you. I personally have kind of a beef with the person giving me prayer requests, but I never get an update. So it's like, man, pray for my grandma. Well, six months later, grandma dead and I'm still praying. Like, that's not helpful for me. It definitely ain't doing nothing for grandma. <laughs> so, you know, like if you do send us a prayer request, we'll we'll commit to praying for that. Uh, we will keep that anonymous mm-hmm. and um, and then give us an update, you know, periodically about what's going on. But I think um, definitely a difficult topic. We're not done with it yet. So we've covered the C. We've covered the L. Just now we covered the O. Mm-hmm. And so um, get ready to tune in. Watch, listen to this episode, pass to someone that you may think um, can benefit from it. You can send it to them from Spotify. You can send it to them from um, Apple Podcast. Podcasts. Okay, thank you. Um, even YouTube. So you can send them a link. Uh, send them our way to check this out. And uh, we just thank you so much for listening. And uh, we'll be back at you to finish up with this uh, Porn Clown series um, that we've created just for you. So thanks, y'all. We hope to see you soon. Take All care right, and God bless. You